Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and welcome to the School Manager Part 8. In this exclusive training, we're going to show you how to create this incredible class with this very unique tab, keeping the columns on the left and right always fixed. I'm also going to go into the admin and update that. We've got brand new scheduling updates general information, adding logo, clearing the logo. We've got classes and lessons update on adding and also removing icons. And we've got certificate updates, how to save and display certificates automatically. And of course, sorting them and deleting the certificates. It's gonna be an incredible training. I can't wait. Let's get started. All right, thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. It's been an incredible series. We've got a lot to go. Today, we are going to cover classes. We're going to be adding this live training. It's going to be an incredible training. So we've got doing it all from scratch. You're going to watch every line of code, every format, every formula. It's going to be great. We've got so much to cover. If you do like these trainings, I've got an incredible program just for you because I'm going to show you how to define, design, develop, and deploy your own Excel applications while I create an incredible accounting application. What kind of accounting application? Well, just the best accounting application ever created in Excel. We're going to complete with a general journal on selection. Compound entries will be able to view transactions, view the details of that. We're going to have a complete dashboard. We'll be able to run reports directly from the specific uh, dashboard or menu up here. We've got login, log out. We also have complete chart of accounts. We'll be able to select on those accounts and see any detailed transactions in those accounts, adding a new account based on a pop-up. We have got uh, writing in the checks. We can need writing checks. We've got entering credit card charges, making transfers. We also have reoccurring transactions, be able to reoccur those. Reconcile your complete accounts, obviously previous reconciliations as well. We can have the ability to print checks with multiple multiple print check formats. That's a really cool feature. We've got multiple ends. We've also got complete, of course, customers, invoice history, payment history, and we've got customer lists, customer payments. We've got incredible uh, invoice. Of course, invoice is fully customizable invoice. You can customize any field. Once you're finished customizing, you can see a complete invoice, making any invoice recurring, invoice deleting or whatever. And then, of course, customizing it. Any type of field you want, you can simply customize it. And also we do the same thing with purchase orders, vendors and bills. We have items in purchasing, complete email automation here, which we've completed. And of course, an email log. I can't wait. That's myexcelmentor.com. If you want to learn more, myexcelmentor.com. I hope you join us. All right, I'm going to close this off and we're going to start up right where we ended last week. All right, taking right off from the few weeks ago when we built this particular certificate and we add a certificate and we're able to view this thumbnail based on a Word document. We also want to make sure that that's hidden. We select any other tabs. Notice it's still here. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that that's hidden or in actuality delete it. So I want to delete that. And then what I want to do is I want to force the user to select another one. Okay, I want to just clear that out. So let's do that inside the VBA right now. And that's going to be on the admin sheet here. And it's based on this worksheet selection change. So when they select a tab, any tab, regardless of we're going to probably just delete it. We could theoretically hide it and then display it again, but I really want to force the user to select and perhaps they want to see a new certificate, not that old certificate. So we can do that um, simply by doing this. So let's do it after the application screen updating. And then what I'm going to do, what is the name of that? We're going to be focused on this particular name. It's always going to be called thumb pick. So I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to go back in to this and I'm going to write in shapes. We're on the sheet, paste that in that dot uh, let's do dot delete, not dot visible. Okay, but there could be an error if it doesn't exist. So we're going to wrap that in on air, resume next. And then also I want to end that out with on air, go to zero. Okay, so that's going to result, resume the error checking. And let's just take a look at that. So now what we want to do is basically it's going to be gone here. And I don't want to display here. I want to force the user to select a new certificate. Maybe they want to see a new one. So, But that's just exactly what else I want to do now. When they select a certificate, I want to display that certificate in there. So first thing we want to do is we want to understand what row are they selecting. And I want to highlight that row. So when I know I've got a selected certificate row here located in B9. So why don't we add conditional formatting onto that? So I'm going to start with the first cell in our range, which is going to be B6, and I'm going to hold down the shift, and I'm going to highlight all the way down to BE27, and I'm going to add some conditional formatting into the home. We'll go into new rule, and I'm going to use a formula, and it's going to be based on this particular row in B9, so it's going to be equals, and then what we'll do is we'll just select B9, and then it's going to equal the row. 
Okay. And then I want to format that differently based if that row is a match. I'm going to add that font. I'm going to use a white font. Then I'm going to make it bold. And then I'm also going to put a fill. And then I'll just do a, a gradient fill. We're going to go from this color down to our standard color, which is this for the screen. Click OK and click OK. And so now it's going to look just like that when it's done. So that's what I want. So basically when they select something, I want that certificate to show up here. But a few other things. If they change that name or they change that type, I want that change. And but I don't want this file name changed. So when I don't want this file name changed. So when we're doing that, what I'd really like to do in this specific case is I'd really like to have a separate database. In other words, we're separating what the user can see here and what is actually saved, right? So that basically we have the, a, a hidden database of certificate names, certificate IDs, and it loads up. So this gets all cleared out and it loads up. We also want to have the ability to, of course, delete a specific certificate. So we can add a button to do that. So we're going to program that, all that in. I'm going to add, remove the line here. It's not really necessary. And I want to also add a delete. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold down the control, actually just this single button here, du duplicate that and hold down this and then duplicate that button here. And then what I'm going to do is bring that in. And we're going to call this delete certificate. Users have to be able to delete specific certificates with the warning. We can add that delete certificate. Okay, and we'll leave a little bit more space. This button's going to be a little bit bigger and then I'll slide it out. So we'll call this 1.4 perhaps. And then I'm going to move it over here. And then what we'll do is we'll group both of them and then we'll give it a specific group. So basically these two will have the group. We only want this button set to appear when, of course, we are on the certificate. So we can make that a little bit bigger there so we have room for the icon. I've got a saved icon, just the delete icon, something we've been using. So I'm going to just insert the picture and I've got a delete icon right here. I'm going to use that. In fact, we're going to use it twice. So I'm going to drop it down to something reasonable like 0.16. And then I'm going to place it right about here inside the delete. OK, that's going to give us our delete, maybe a bit bigger, 0.18. All right, so we've got our delete icon. And then what I want to do is I want to delete that certificate. I'm going to use it. I'm going to copy this for now. And I'm just going to place it right here. I'm going to need that. We also want to delete icons. So I'm going to place that here just for now. And then when we delete icons, we're going to cover that next. We'll have that icon available to us. So we've got delete certificate and we've got uh, del add the certificate here. So two good buttons that are going to help us with that. 1.35, make that a little bit bigger. All right, so how do we do that? So as I was mentioning to you, what I really want to do is I want to have a separate database. So why don't we create that now? We've got a teacher database. Let's call this one certificate. I'm going to create a new sheet and not up there. I'm going to create it down here. This sheet one instead of we're going to call this certificate database. Okay, It's going to be a very, very simple database. It's not going to have a lot of features in it. We do want to have our certificate ID. So that's the first thing we're going to do. So inside the first column, I'm going to put in certificate. We're not going to map the date on this. It's just too simple for that certificate ID. And then the next column, I want the name, right? That's important. We have to put the name. The user can change that. I want to put the type and the file name, the actual file name and the row. So that's it. The row is the row that's on. I'm also going to be running an advanced filter on this. So that means any certificate that gets deleted is going to not have a name. It's not going to have any of this information, but it will have a certificate ID. We're going to keep increasing that. So what I want to do is when I want to bring in those certificates, I want to bring them in for those that are not loaded up. Let me pull that screen up. Only those that are not loaded, right? It's only those that are not deleted. So those that are not deleted will, of course, will not have a name. So I want to bring in only those that uh, have a name, of course. So anything that wasn't deleted. So if we run an advanced filter based on that, in fact, I'm going to bring this so we don't have to keep moving. I'm going to drag this all the way over here right next to our admin so we can just switch back and forth as we're using it. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to create a criteria on that. So we're going to call this criteria. And it's going to be based on, for our filter, it's going to be based on the name. So make sure this name here is exactly like this name. And then I just wanted basically meaning not blank. So we're going to put that does not equal sign in here. And then I want those results to come in here. I want to bring those results. We probably don't need the certificate ID, but we do know, need the row. So I'm going to bring that in here and I'm going to place that right in. Let's say we'll just bring in the certificate in case later we want to add it, but we probably won't be using it much. I'm going to bring it in right here and we're going to call this results. So our results of our advanced filter are going to come right here. Certificate ID will be like one, two, three, and so on. So we need a named range for that. How do we do that? Well, again, we're going to create a dynamic name range, something we've been doing. Uh, a few people have said, well, you go over the same thing over and over again. You know, 
know, it is true, I do, we do a lot of this, but that's how we learn, right? When we keep doing the same thing over and over again, you know, like these certificates, that's how we learn, that's how we get good at it, that's how we save time, and that's how we have less errors. So this repetition is extremely important for your development. Even though we've done it before, if you, you know, if it's new to you, great, but you know, this kind of repetition offset is going to help you tremendously. We're going to go with the header row here, okay? Starting with the header row in case there's no data. We're going to go offset one row down on this, and then comma, comma, count A. We're going to count everything that has a value. And of course, certificate ID is always going to have a value. Again, we're going to start in the header row, go all the way down to a large row, let's say 999. Then we have to subtract one because we don't want to include the header row in the final count, comma, and then one column. Tab out, tab back in, okay? And we're going to check that out. One too many commas here, okay? There we got that, tab out, tab in, and we're good. That's perfect, the dancing answer around the data. Okay, so we've got that. So as we add that, now we can build that up a little bit. So we're gonna have, anytime we make a change, the idea is this, if a user changes the type or changes the name, not the file name, changes either one of these, then automatically it's going to be changed here in this. So what do we need to do? If they make a change, if they make a change to this, I need to know a few things, I really need to know just really one thing, I need to know what row is located on. If I take this information from the certificate database, including the row, and I bring in it in here, all this information, name, type, row, and I bring the row in. Now the row would come right in here, but the row could be hidden. So if I make a change to here, I need to know what row. I'll look here, is there a row here? If there is, then take whatever it is, load, and load that, and then reload it, reload those certificates, reload it up. So that's how we're gonna, or we could just simply make the change here, and make the change here and also make it in uh, the row. So that's all we need. We know the column because why? If they make a change to type, we know automatically that that's going to be in column three. If they make a change to file name, we know it is in column four. So it's relatively simple. We just need to know the row and the column and then we're good to go. So we can write that up pretty quickly. Okay, so the idea is to add a certificate and then delete a certificate and then I want all the certificates loaded up here and I also want them sorted by name so that they're easy to load. That's one possibility to sort by name but or we could do another way we could sort it based on the added so that the oldest one added is down here the newest one added is up here so we'll do that that way we always know if they add one we always know it's going to appear at the top so we'll do that we could sort by name but I'll do it based on the ID sort by ID number the, the descending so let's write that up now get that certificate added in so we can move on all right so we're just going to go into the code and do a little bit of code writing here inside so we've got that already inside the uh, admin certificate macros we're just going to add a little bit to that all right now that we're going to have a database we need to add a few different variables now we already have certificate rows long but i want to know the certificate database certificate database row i also want to know the certificate as long and I also want to know the certificate database column, certificate database column as long. And also, we're going to, if we're going to be adding new ones, we need to know the last certificate database row, very important, and also the last result row, last result row as long, because we're going to have to sort them, right, based on the certificate number, so we want to know that as long. Okay. So that's going to help us out. Now what we, we have the admin add certificate, but basically all we did is just simply added the name and this to this existing sheet, right? All we did here was just add the certificate type, the name, and the name. So I wanna do a little bit different than that. I wanna update that so if the user changes the name. So let's go ahead and may update that code so that it works with the database. So the certificate row in actuality is gonna be the first available row in the certificate database, right? We have a new database. Let me rename that accordingly. Here in sheet one, I'm gonna click on the properties here, and we're gonna name it the same as that. If you wanna, just to double check, right? If we wanna make sure its name double click on here control C and then all we do is we're gonna go back into the code and then just paste that directly in here in sheet one where it is here and the properties okay so that's the certificate database okay so back into that now we've given it a code name so now we can work with it so certificate you can just paste it in again paste it in here database range and it's not a will make this a column a the first row available in column a and then we're up okay so one up row one that's going to get us the first available row first available row now that we have there now what else do we want to do now that we know the row i want to place that id the first column is going to get the id but what is the id i want to know the next available id of course we've been through this before in this case it's 
four, right? So all we need to do is place that inside a formula, inside our admin, and we know the next available row. So we can use any column for that. Why don't we use uh, column B, of course, just as we usually do, and we'll use B10. So we want to know the next certificate ID, and uh, the best way to do that is using the max formula, but if there's an error, if there's no data, equals if error, max, certificate ID, that's the one we just created, plus one. If there's none available, we want it to revert to one. So we can do that if there's an error. Okay, so that's it. So the next one would be four, which is correct. And if there was no data, it's gonna be one. So I'm gonna clear out that data and make sure that reverts to one inside the certificate. We'll delete that and then make sure that it reverts to one, one being one. Okay, good. So we've got that there. That's exactly what I want. Now we know what ID to place directly in the side column A, but now I wanna place the name, the type, file name, and the row. I wanna place all of that information directly in. So we wanna update this code accordingly. So the first thing to do is certificate ID. Let's place that ID now that we have the row. So, so we'll call this, let's take a look at certificate database. Copy that here, A and the certificate actually we should call it certificate database row right here that's it so let's change that name certificate database database row i don't want to confuse it we'll use the selected row certificate database row okay dot value equals what it simply equals whatever is located in b10 b10 is where it's located here in the admin so b10 there we just put it in there so i'm going to take that right there so bring that up again here and then we'll put it into range, range equals range B10. Okay, that's the next certificate ID, dot value. Next certificate ID. Okay, now that we have that, I wanna know the name, right? The, the, the file name, we'll just put file name, I wanna revert to the same thing here, file name here, and then we'll put in file type. There's no file type, but it's not gonna go in BC. Where's it gonna go? It's gonna go in B, and this is going to go in D, right? Why is that? Well, because we don't have a type, the user's gonna add the type, right? So we've got the name in B, we've got the file name in D, and I wanna put the row in E. So let's put that in the row in E. So add this, of course, we're adding the database here to that. So that's not the existing sheet, so we wanna add that here. And then, of course, dot, so certificate database. And then E, of course, we're gonna place that specific certificate row. There we go. So we're gonna put the same exact file name, both in B and D, and then allow the user to change it if they want. In E, we are going to put in the certificate row, certificate database row. I keep fixing, we need to do update that, so we'll do it right here, here, here and here. So I want to put that database row because I want to, the certificate row is going to be that row that was selected for our certificate. That row that's selected, a little bit different. Equals, and then I'm going to paste that in there. Certificate, and that's going to be important because when we bring in that value, I want to bring in that row. So when we make changes, we know what row. Certificate, database row. Okay, so we've got that. Everything is good. So now the new path is we, we're going to keep that the way. Everything else is good. I like everything else. Okay, let's save that and let's go ahead and add a new one and see how it looks. But before we do that, right, we're, do we want to display it. I want to run that advanced filter because I want to actually load it. So we've added it, but all we've done is we've simply added it to this area right here. What we really need to do is then take this information, all of them, whatever row it's been on, take them all, bring them back into there, but clear everything out of here first. So let's, let's create a macro that's called certificate load. And we're going to bring in that and loading that actual certificate. So we can write that right now because we want to load in. So we've got add certificate, we've got certificate sum. We're going to have another one called certificate delete. So we can write that. We'll just write sub because I don't want to forget that. Sub admin certificate delete. So we've got that. And then, of course, we want another one for load. So sub admin certificate load. So now we've got those. So let's oh, let's work on the, the load. And the first thing what I want to do is I want to delete any possible picture that might be here just in case. So let's delete that. Let's run some code to delete that. So again, on error, resume next. And then let's just do we're going to focus on, of course, with the admin sheet. So with actually we can we're going to focus on the database mostly on this one. So let's just write an admin dot shapes thumb pick dot delete we're going to delete it and then just like we did earlier we're going to go on air go to zero okay so now we've deleted it and now what we're going to do is i want to clear the contents also i want to clear all the data here from bc6 all the way down to bf because i'm going to put the row in there bf in this case 27 so we can write that in right now okay continuing on so range admin dot range 
And then of course it's B, C6, all the way through B, F, and then 26, all the way down. I'm going to clear out all those contents, dot clear contents. And that's going to clear out all the values. Clear out existing certificate data. Okay, so continue on. Now what we do is now we're going to focus directly on the certificate database. So with certificate database, and I'm just going to put the dot in there, make sure that we've got the sheet name right. And then what do I want to do with that? Well, first of all, I want to know the last certificate row, the last certificate database row. Let's check our, our values here. Let's check our last certificate database row. That's the one I want to use. So up in that equals and then XLR, that's going to be, of course, with our last row because we're going to run an advanced filter. So I need to know the last row in that specific. If for some reason it's less than three, if the last row is less than three, then exit the sub, then there's no data. Then exit sub, exit on no data. So continuing on, assuming that we have data, we're ready to, we're ready to run our advanced filter. So I'm going to put in a, using auto hotkey. I'll make it a little bit quicker here. Okay, so let's just write that up. We can remove this. And auto hotkey helped me type that out in case you're not familiar with that. A2, we're going to start on that. So what is our advanced filter? Going back to the certificate database here, starting with A2 all the way through E and the last row. So that's our original data. So let's put that in. A2, E, and the last, not transaction row in this case, of course. It's going to be the last certificate row, last certificate database row. That's the one we want. Now, our criteria is just simply the name. It's H2 through H3. That's our criteria. We just want to make sure that we have names. So I'm going to change this to H2 through H3. And of course, our uh, results are going to come simply from J2 all the way through N2. That's going to bring our results in here J2 through N2. J through n. So unique equals true, that's fine. Now we need the last results row. We have the last results row here in our variable, so we can copy and paste that and come down here. Equals, and then what's it going to be? What's the specific column that we're going to use? I'm going to use column J, J's required certificate ID. So J is going to be our last. Again, we're going to do the same thing. If the last row, in this case, the last results row, so we're going to write that in as less than three, last result row is less than three then except that means there's no data maybe they've all been deleted it's possible certainly it's assuming that we have it now all we need to do is just bring that into our main area so how are we going to do that but before we do i do want to make sure that we're actually sorting based on the uh, certification id i want the the most recent here and the least down here so i want to sort that based on descending so to do that we just write up a little bit so we know our know the last data so with dot sort, we've already got that on there. And dot sort, what are we going to do? The first thing we're going to do is clear the sort fields. So dot sort, sort fields dot clear. Next thing, what we want to do is I want to set the key. So dot sort fields, and then dot add. I want to add a key. What kind of key do I want? The key is going to be equal to. In this case, we're going to focus on the database here located here so it's going to be based on the certificate we also have to specify again we need to specify the sheet because now we're within the sort so it's going to equal database dot in this case j3 or first day j3 range j3 okay so we've got our range there but now i want to sort on sort on equals and then of course xl sort on values on values Okay, so after we're sorting on the values, what is the order? The order is going to be equal to descending, XL descending, right? Because I want the newest at the top, descending. And also I want the data option. The data option is going to be, in this case, sort normal. Data option, sort XL sort normal equals XL sort normal. Okay, so now that we have that, I also want to set the range. What is that going to range? Set the range is going to be equal to here. Again, it's going to be based on the certificate range. The, the range, again, we're going to focus all the way in J3, J3, all the way through N and the last results row. Last result row. Okay, good. That's it. That's the set. That's the range that we're doing. And then the last thing all we need to do is simply apply to that. Okay, let me fix that. All right. And don't forget the and sign, Randy. Okay, and then you're just going to apply that. So we need to apply the sort down here, the next load, dot apply. Now we've got the sort ready. So now once they're sorted in the descending, all I want to do is bring that in here. So basically all I'm going to do is take the values from the admin located right here, BC6 all the way through BF. BC6 through BF. This one starts on 6. But in this case, we have a limited number of rows, right? We only have a total of 
27 rows. So I'm going to bring those in. So all those certificates are 22 rows up to row 27. So why don't we do just that? BC6 through BF27. We'll copy down 22 rows. So doing that. So since we have a limited. So again, we have to specify the admin. Admin the range BC6 all the way through BF26. BF26 dot value equals again both focus back here on the certificate database we're going to we're not adding the uh, certificate id we're simply adding the name through the row so k through n k through n those four columns is all we're bringing in so k through n is here so equals dot range k again and this is three k three through n and the last results row not here forgot that parentheses here Run that in. Don't forget that. Okay, through n and the last results row, and the last result row dot value. So bring in all that in. But in this case, if we're going to bring in a fixed amount, we also need to bring in a fixed amount here. So we don't. We're going to ignore this in this case. It's going to go all the way to n. In this case, of course, we're adding from six to twenty six here. So we're going to do the same thing from three to twenty three. So n twenty three. All right. So bring in all the values there in a fixed amount. That's it. That's it. And then what I want to do is just make sure that we're enabling events. We should probably disable the events on that or make sure they're enabled to make it faster. So making sure the application and why am I doing this? Because eventually what I want to do is when I bring in here, when I bring in this here, when I make a change to this, I want that change to be reflected directly on there. So with that kind of change, I want to, what I mean by that, if a user updates the type or user updates the name, just these two, I want to automatically update the name of the type here. So to do that, I need to differentiate between when we load in the results here and when we do it. So one another way to do that is just turn off application enabling events. So how do we do that? So before we bring in the data, we just disable events. So right here, what we're going to do is simply add application dot enable events equals false, and then we're going to make it true. Then all I need to do is make it true. So that way it's not going to trigger when I add that code in to make the change equals true. Great. So we've got that there. And now let me just go ahead and take a look. And then I want to do one more thing. I want to actually make sure that we're going to load it. I want to maybe we're going to load that most recent picture here. So loading that. So when we load it, I want to select on the newest one. So it automatically loads it. So how do we do that? Well, we're simply going to select whatever's in BC6. So let's do that. Let's just select it. And then that code will run eventually automatically. So right here, admin dot range bc6 select bc6 dot select okay so what that's going to do is just going to select it and that's going to trigger to loading in that because i want to load that most recent one so perfect so we know that we're going to load so what i want to do is take this admin load as soon as they've added one which is going to be up here as soon as they've added a certificate i want to run the macro to load instead of showing the certificate i want to load it in load it in so we can do that here loaded and loading is going to automatically add it because that load includes selection now when they select on something i want to actually add that specific macro in that's going to load it so let's just take a look at that and see how far we are i'm going to save the work okay i'm going to click add the certificate check for anything so i'm going to click on the certificate click ok and see how far we got okay we need the last in this case of course the last certificate database row continuing on all right, take a look at that. Okay, it's loaded in, but we do need to, this is, I've got the row here, which is what I want. I'm just gonna left justify that, we'll make that hidden. Perfect, we didn't add a type, which is fine. And now what I wanna do is I wanna select, when I select on this, I want that to load. So let's write that in right now. We have the conditional formatting already. So if this particular certificate row, B9, changes to six, it's automatically going to change, right? So that's good, perfect. So why don't we add that right now? So when we select on that, BC, Let's put that down here. Any selection change based on BC6 all the way through BE and 26, we want something to happen, assuming that there's a data in here. So we're going to write up that selection change event. That's going to go into the admin here. Here's the admin. Here's worksheet selection change. So when a user will start down here, user makes a selection, if not intersect. Okay, when they make a selection based anywhere from, again, BC6 all the way to BE26. BC6, BC6 through BE and 26. And of course, one other thing, you know, we have to make sure that there's a value and range 
And let's just make sure, let's make sure that BF has a value, right? That's okay for now. BF, because that row is super important, right? We need, we, without that row. So let's make sure that BF contains, is not blank. So let's write that in right now. And range BF, BF, and the target row, dot value does not equal empty. Then, then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and load that up. And the first thing we want to do is take whatever is whatever row we've selected and place that directly inside here in B9. So that's important. Without that row, we won't know. So again, range B9 dot value equals the target row. And then what we can do is we can run that macro that's going to load that certificate or display that certificate, right? All we need to do is display it. So now we can display the certificate. Remember our B, when we select BC6, it's going to load it. So all we need to do again is go into the certificate macros and look at this one to display, show the certificate thumb, and then run that specific macro that's going to display. It's going to display it, of course, based on whatever the certificate row we've just placed inside B9. So back inside the admin here, running it in here, placing that right here. Okay, now again, we're going to reset here. We're going to save it. And then we'll take a look. So now when I select on something, we want to display. So we do need to browse for that. We have, it's been removed. We have a new place for it. All right, let's update the file path on that. So I'm going to go in here. Now, take a look at this app folder. Let's use F8, F8. Go down here and take a look at this folder path. That's not correct here. All the way here. All right, let's take a look. If we go inside the code and, and tap through that, let's take a look. Show certificate and we go F8. Tabbing through this, let's take a look at that file path that's not correct. Now, if we take a look at this file path, we see it's missing the application folder. Application folder is empty, which it shouldn't be. We're using the brackets. All we did with here, why don't we just go up here and do something, create that into a variable, just like we did up here, app folder. Put it into a variable, and then we'll use the range. We do have that, but it may be because we have the same type of name as a variable, which probably isn't very good. So we're going to copy that app folder, and then again, we're just going to do this app folder. In other words, we have a variable, the same name as our here variable here. Okay, so let's try that. Now all we need to do is reset it. Select on that here, and we'll see that that template. Now, okay, great. Now it's appearing just like we to let's add another certificate okay so we'll click add a certificate and i think i've got another one inside here this week's here this one here why don't we add that one here so we want that to appear at the top and then we want it to appear here all right great that looks really good that's exactly the way i want now we've got two certificates perfectly laid out and when we select a certificate is going to go load that selected certificate that's just the way i like it okay last thing i want to be able to delete a certificate that's really important let's write the macro to do just that delete certificate okay so we have show certificate now and now let's go ahead and this one certificate delete we're going to write that up so we're going to focus again with focus mostly on the admin sheet so with the admin Again, sheet. I want to make sure that B9 is not empty. If we have if B9, which is our certificate row now, if that's empty, we, there's nothing we can do that. So we need to make sure that that we know what certificate's been selected. Once we know what's selected, we also need to know which database row it is. But first thing we need to know is B9. So let's make sure that we have a value there. Otherwise, nothing we can do. If dot range B9 dot value equals empty, then exit sub i should write that into an auto hot case i use it all the time okay so then there's nothing they can do or you could do something like this instead of exiting the sub out you can give them a message something like this and if and then that message could be something like message box please select on a certificate to delete and then also you want to you can also give them an option in case they want to get out of it right so something like this if message box and then are you sure you want to delete this certificate okay and then we'll call this bb yes no yes no and then we'll give it a title delete certificate and then if this equals vb no then we can just exit sub then exit so that gives them a confirmation. So, okay, now that we know that they do want it, we can focus on the certificate row. We know that that's located in B9 here. So we could just copy this, put it in certificate row is going to equal B9. Certificate 
row. That's a selected row. We could probably use also selected row because it gets a little bit confusing. We have a certificate. So we'll call this selected row, selected certificate row. So we can be clear. Now we also have the database. We want to know what, what's the database row. Well, that's going to be located in BF and the certificate row. So the certificate database row is going to be equal to dot range. In this case, BF and the certificate row and the certificate row. Now we want to need to make sure that that, and that's called the database row, certificate database row. We also want to make sure that that's not blank. If certificate certificate database row equals zero, and then exit the sub, then exit sub. Okay, assuming that it's not, then what we want to do is we're ready to go, okay? Making sure we could also, of course, write in, please select something like this here. Again, keeping consistent is probably a good thing like this, adding the end if, and then get rid of this exit sub. Please select on it. So now that we have it, we know what certificate database row. Again, we're using sharing and sync. When we're having sharing and sync, we're just not going to clear everything out. We're going to do it cell by cell. That'll come very clearly when we hit the sharing and sync um, training that in a few weeks or maybe months. Um, what we want to do is I want to keep this ID here. I want to clear this out, this out, this out, this out. I want to use a, basically a loop to do that. So we're going to go all the way from 2, 3, 4, and 5. So a simple loop from 2 to 5. Very, very easy. And we're going to use the certificate database column variable to do just that. For certificate database column equals, let's do this, column equals 2, 2, 5. Next certificate database column. Okay, considering on we have now certificate database, make sure you have the name right, and so the dot, that's correct cells, we're using cells because both the row and the column are variable now. So we got the certificate database row, we've already defined that. We already know what the column is, certificate database column dot clear contents. We're clearing out the contents of each one, one by one. It's fast, so no worries. Okay, so that's all we're gonna do, that's gonna clear. Then also I wanna delete the picture, right? We've, I wanna just clear whatever picture's out there if it's there. So why don't we just, we've already written that up a few different times. This basically this here. I just want to copy and paste that and I'm going to go down there. And I also want to reload it. Now that we've deleted the picture, we've deleted it from the database file, right? Everything's been deleted. I also want to clear this out. Now another way to clear it out is just simply run the macro that's going to reload it. So how do we do that? That's just simply copy and paste that macro. We already have this macro that's going to load it and it's going to only going to load those without with that have a name. So all we need to do is just write in admin certificate load. That's simply going to do that automatically delete and then if you want to another additional step we can do is we can uh, then select bc6 if there's anything here it'll load whatever certificates up there so we can do that as well so just loading that in just like we did under the load but we've already done it here so let's take a look at this so this one we've just added the older one certificate i want to delete that one so i'm going to assign that macro here so i'm going to simply click on it and hold down the control clicking on this actually we should group these first right that's my sure i want to group this not not the certificates so let's undo that only these two here this two here i want to group those align them up group them here we're also going to have to group all the them together i'm going to assign a macro to this so right click and assign that macro this one's called ad admin certificate delete clicking ok now clicking ok are you sure you want to delete that no good Clicking OK, are you sure you want to delete that? Yes, it's going to delete that, automatically delete it, and it's going to load the, the most one, assuming that there is, if there was nothing here. Great, so that's working good. Let's take a look inside our database, making sure that everything but the certificate ID is now cleared out, right? We've run our advanced filter. Our results are only those that ha don't have a name, and we've automatically loaded in those certificates. Great, so that's working really, really well. I also, when I change the tabs, I want to make sure that we have these in a group. So Again, let's go ahead and click on this. I need to group this. This hasn't been grouped, so I'm going to group that here. And then I also want to group it here. So I'm going to group both of those, and we're going to call that certificate group. So I'm going to give it a name, calling it certificate group. It is only the certificate group that I want to show when we, you know, when we display the certificates and awards. I'm also going to right-click that and make sure the properties are set to move but don't size. Move but don't size. It's very important every time we group something. Okay, so it is this, this certificate group that I want displayed only when we select that. So let's take a look inside the admin tabs and make sure that that's updated if it's not. So admin tabs here. So we're looking at for certificates here, right in here, certificates and award. I want to make sure that's displayed. Admin.shapes. Again, certificate group, dot visible, 
equals, I'm going to say true, okay? I'm going to change that to false for hiding. When we hide everything, when we hide everything here, we want to make sure it's uh, hidden. So admin visible equals MSO false. Okay, so we're going to hide that on hide it. So now this button set's only going to be displayed when the certificate is signed. So when we change the group and change it back, it's all going to be displayed and we've hidden it. The only other thing that I want to do is I want to probably clear out the selected, right? When we change tabs, I really should clear this out. When it's cleared, that means nothing selected. I think that makes more sense. B9 should also be cleared. So here on hide all, well, let's clear out that range too. Admin dot range B9 and we may end up clearing more out, dot clear, content. we may add more to that. So it's going to clear it out additional, like as we're selecting things. Okay, so now we can select it. So let's take a look. Selecting on that, it's going to be displayed, our particular certificate. Selecting on something else, and then going back here, it's cleared out, the cleared out. That's just, and then all we want to do is we can hide this, and I'm going to change that font. We can easily change the font, of course, to the same as the background's color. I'm going to change it a little bit lighter. kind of gives you the idea that it should be hidden, but this is a training purposes, so we're not launching it. So I want you to be able to see that number four. That's important. Okay, but as mentioned before, I want to be able to change these names and change this type. How can we do that? How do we change the names, change the types automatically? Well, let's take a look here. All we need to do is simply determine the database row and determine and then the column and then we can update it. So that's going to be, of course, in the change event in the admin. So let's go into that. And basically, it's going to be on any change again from B6 all the way through BE26, ensuring that there's a row. So it's pretty much the same thing as the selection change event. However, this is going to be for change event. So we can follow that pretty much. And we go into the admin and we take a look under the selection change event. We can copy this here, although we're not going to be using all of it. And then we're going to actually put it down here into the change event. So it is changing. We certainly need to make sure the target row. And then also we don't need to know this. So we need to make sure that we do have a value in BF. And also we can determine the certificate database row. The certificate, we'll dimension that, dimension the certificate database row as long. And also we want to know the certificate column as long, just in case certificate, certificate or database column as long. So we need those two. So the row we know is already in BF in the target row. We know the row of that database is located right here. If it doesn't exist, of course, it won't. we won't be in here. So let's do this. Let's paste this down here, BF. And that's, of course, going to be the certificate database row, OK, equals, OK, range. So this is our row. But now all we need is the column to make the change. So certificate database row. OK, so, but what about the column? Let's take a look. If we make a change to basically we're just focused on I'm not going to worry about the file name. So let's make a change. It's only to BC through BD. That's all I want to focus on BC through BD. That's it. Just those names. I'm not going to allow them to change the name because that's the file name. That's part of the file name. So if they want to make a change to the name or the type, that should be just fine. So if they make any change in BC or BD, we want to update that. So BC, what column is this? This is column. Take a look, 55, and this is column 56. So if they make a change to column 55, what column do we need to change inside the certificate database? Well, it's going to be column 2. So to get from 55 to 2, all we need to do is subtract 53. So we can do that for either one of those columns, for B or C. So all we need to do is determine the target column and then subtract 53. So that will do us right here. So we can do that right here. So inside the code here, certificate database column equals target dot column minus 53 now we're ready to write the code so certificate database dot cells because we need both of is certificate database row comma certificate database column dot value equals target dot value okay let's write this out let's see how that looks and we'll add a type in so let's just add a type let's call this completion we'll let that load up it's kind of strange that we load it up but maybe we'll add this there so when we select it notice that something else is being selected so why don't we add this because something else if they make a change we can do that so let's call this um let's see oh just call this award and then let's see how that looks. Make sure that that made that change inside the certificate database. And here it is, award here. Okay, I like that. And then we can change the name and then just call this certificate award, certificate award, and making sure that that changes. And then making sure that no change in here 
affects it. So we want to make sure that there's no change, no change, because we don't. We're only focused on the change for BC and BD. And we'll take a look in here, and it's changed to a certificate award. Great. So now we can update the database for the right row, and we're working perfectly. Okay, I'm glad we got that done. That was important. We also want to focus a little bit on some updates within the icon. So let's take a look inside here, and we have classes and lessons here. But I want to be able to select a specific icon and then have be able to delete the icon and then resort it. So let's get that done now. And that's the reason we've got this X. So basically, I want this to show up here and have us to be able to delete it. So the first thing we need to do is add a selection change event and make sure this icon appears. We'll give this other than picture 41. Let's give it a name. We're going to call it delete icon button. Now that we have a name, we want it to place it specifically located, let's just say in CJ and whatever the column is, CJ and whatever that whatever the row that they've selected. Okay, so we also want to know what row they've selected. If selected row, we want to make sure there's conditional formatting so we know that. And what row are we going to have? Well, let's put it in eight, right? We have eight available. So let's just put select. Select an icon row here, and if they select, let's say, 9, right, we can put 9 in there if they've selected that, and then we want that to be highlighted again. So what I'll do is just give it that color, and then add some conditional formatting in here. Let's do that. Add some conditional formatting for those, just as we have with anybody else, any other type of conditional formatting. Same format, again, equals, based on B8, B8, and then we'll say equals row. So that's the row, the selected row that they have. Giving them that format, we're going to use that bold font. We're going to use that fill, same gradient fill that we use. Our keeping consistent with our patterns here, using this, and then this gray here, this like gray to black. Also along with the bold white font. So bold and white font here. Okay, so now that we've got that set up, and we take a look at it. That's what we want to see. And now it's printed. So now we know the selected row. All we need to do is add the selection change event. So on the selection change event, what I want to do is I want to place that specific row in B8. And then I also want to display this icon accordingly on the right side. So let's get to that now. That's based on selection change. So again, inside the admin, again, we're going to focus down here on selection change. We'll go down to the bottom. Now we're going to be based on a certain range. Selecting the range could be anywhere from, let's say, AP9 all the way down to AR27, AP9 to AR27. So we're going to write some code for that, if not. And let's just put some code on here. And let's write it, put in a then so it's not red. Then and close our loop. And then we'll just base on icon row selection. We're going to have these icons in a drop down. This is going to be really, really cool inside the classes, which we're building next. OK, so not obviously not H12. We're going to be focusing on the specific range that I mentioned. A R or A P A R P A P nine all the way through A R and then we're going to locate it all the way down to twenty six. So let's focus on that. We may go lower, but that's fine for now. We'll continue. We could go lower. So again, A P nine all the way through A R twenty six. I mentioned that like three times already. Enough <laughs> through A P nine through A R twenty six. Okay. And also we want to make sure that there's a value in there. I want to make sure that that there's something in there and range we want to make sure that aq and the target row aq and the target dot row dot value does not equal empty or empty then we want to do some things okay then first thing i want to do again take that and be it and then get rid of that okay so continuing on range b8 dot value equals the target dot row next thing what to do is i want to place that specific icon in the appropriate column in the appropriate row. So what is that icon? With shapes. We call it delete icon button. So that's what we're going to be focused on. First thing I want to place it on the left. Where do I want to place it? Equals. I want to specify the sheet in this case because we're inside the width for the shapes. Range and we're going to place it directly inside here. We want to place that maybe AS. Let's see if AS works, even though AS is hidden, right? Let's see if that works. We can place it just because we don't know if we're always going to use the columns, but I think AS is a safe bet on that. So let's use that. AS and the selected row. AS and the target dot row, or we can use either way, the target dot row dot left, okay? That's the left position. And then also the top position is going to be very similar. Top position is going to be also AS based on the top position of that. Okay, so we can paste that in top, and then of course we want it visible, dot visible 
equals MSO true. And one thing I like when I'm displaying icons like this, I want to make sure that if I select anything else in the sheet that it's basically hidden. So all the way up here on the top of selection change, maybe way up here before then I want to put if shapes this shape dot visible equals true then make it false that means if they select anything else no matter what it's going to be false it's going any selection change it's going to make sure it's hit then we're going to say dot shapes dot visible equals mso false basically when we select anything no matter what it's going to be hidden right the only time it's going to be displayed is when we show up and we click somewhere else that's the only time i want it displayed Okay. When I click here, I want a prompt saying, are you sure you want to delete that icon? And if they say yes, then I want that icon deleted. So let's write the macro to do just that now, and then we'll assign that macro to this little X. Okay, so inside that, and then we're going to go inside our admin tabs here, miscellaneous. We have macros, we have certification, miscellaneous, we'll cover that. We've got that. We're going to go, we've got our icons down here. So we've got sorting icons, and we also have our adding icons, which is here browse for icon, but we need a delete icon. So we're going to put that right here, sub admin delete icon. Okay, so the first thing is we need a prompt to that to make sure that they're actually want to make sure that they did that. So if the first thing we're going to do, if message box, are you sure you want to remove this icon, then VB yes, no, then give it a title, delete icon. And of course, we now need to close up in the confirmation. So equals VB no, then exit the sub, then exit sub, exit if they're not sure. Okay, now considering they are, all we need to do is make sure we, won't, we also, the only, we need to make sure that there's actually a value and an icon here we need to make sure. So the icon is the same name, of course, as this name. So we, when we, We'll set up the sort properly. We want to make sure that the chemistry and the computer, you know, computer or whatever we have, icon computer, icon English, it's the same name. So we need to make sure that there's actually a value in here. We need to make sure. Okay, so we can check that. And also we need to make sure that there's a selected row. We need to make sure B8 contains that selected row. So we can do that. So we're going to dimension the selected row as long. Okay. And also if uh, let's say we can first of all go with admin we're going to focus on that if dot range b8 the value if there's nothing there then we can exit out value equals empty then i guess we can probably just exit the sub we could also put a note down but i think that's fine then exit sub okay so assuming that there's not the first thing i want to do is put in the selected row so the selected row equals b8 selected row is going to equal b8 that's going to put our row in there and we're good to go on that Okay, once we have that, we can then build our shape. So in case it doesn't exist, in case that icon doesn't exist, we don't want an error. So we need to do on air resume next, and then on air go to zero. Then inside here, what we want to do is dot shapes. We've already with the admin. We know it starts with the word logo. So that's, and we also know it's got the underscore. And then what else comes after that inside our logo? After that, when we select on load icon, and then it's the name, then whatever's the name that's located in AR. So that's it. So all we need to do is just build out based on whatever is in AR. So let's build that out. So logo and again, add, let's see, dot admin. All right, we're focused on the sheet or sorry, dot range AR. We're already in AR and the selected row dot value. So that's going to get us that name there that we want so much. Close it up dot. And then in this case, we want to delete it, delete it. Okay. So we've deleted that icon, we've wrapped it in on air, resume next and on air, go to zero. And now what I wanna do is I wanna clear the contents, right? So basically what I wanna do is I just wanna clear everything out, clear this and clear this item out as well. I'm gonna clear all that out. So the best way to do that is just to simply uh, clear it out one by one. So let's do that. I'm gonna do it one by one in this case because I wanna trigger in this case, there's no database that's connected to these. This is the database. So I want to clear one, and then I want to clear the other. That's going to trigger for sharing and sync as opposed to the range, one at a time. So dot range, in this case, we're going to see AR, AQ in the selector, AQ and K, AR, that's correct, both of those. AQ and the selected row and the selected row, and then dot clear contents, dot clear contents. And then also I want to make sure that we're going to do AR2 dot range 
AR. There's a few ways to update this one when we're not using a database like this. So I will go over those when we go to, I'll show you different options when we get to sharing and sync of how we can share and sync this. We can do it all once because there's a sort on this. So what do I mean by that? Let me just finish this up before I start talking too much again and then miss something. Okay, so we've cleared the content. So, so what I mean by that is when we resort it, everything gets jumbled up. So if I go one by one and make a change, create a change event, there's not going to be that many, right? So let's say we resort it. That change event is going to be for every user. So when I make a change here, if I resort it, then I specifically send each individual change to a folder to every other user. And I know, okay, so what is in AQ9? What is in AR10? So if we do that, if I send every change no matter what, to every user, it's only like 10 or 15. It would be within split second. That's okay. In a very limited small data, we can do that. That's a very limited small database. So we can do that all at once. I can write a macro to send every every item to every computer in this range, in this specific. But when it comes to a large database, we only want to make one change at a time, one change at a time. So we're only sending one, 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 something like that, okay? So keep that in mind. So theoretically, because we are going to do that, because we're going to have a macro that sends all those changes, we could write this into a single line of code, right? So comma like this. So we'll leave it like this now, but theoretically, they could be in a single line of code. It wouldn't be a big issue. Okay, so we've got that. Next thing I want to do is I want to clear that selected row that's going to be in b8 so we want to clear that i'm going to copy that and then write clear contents that's going to clear that select row we don't want it. we've just deleted it so we don't want that selected anymore and once we do that we've clicked row. now what all we need to do is we've got a macro that's going to resort those icons we went over that originally a week or two ago so i'm just going to run that in here okay so place that in there now of course we're going to save our code and we're going to assign this particular macro to that x and we're going to test it out and see how that's working so admin then i'm going to select on something right click assign a macro paste that in there and click click OK up here and now we're gonna try it out so let's say English which is my worst subject that should get deleted so say no and now we want to say yes so let's say yes okay perfect it got perfectly clear out the only thing I don't want to necessarily I guess it's okay but we may not want to select that first row uh, notice how we did clear it out but then automatically it's selected that may or may not be okay that's because on our macro here, sort icons, we've probably selected the first one here. So we've selected something here that caused it automatically to prepare. Notice I wrote this note here, update shared folder when resorted. So basically we need to take all this data and resort it. So clearing out uh, the whole row is probably okay in this case. All right, good, it's working perfectly. We can add icons, we can now delete icons, we can select on there, perfect. We select anything else, the X has gone away. Okay, I like that, perfect. What's next? Okay, inside the general information, we've got a space for logo, but we really need a button. To, we want to be able to add that logo there. So why don't we why don't we write a code to add that logo and some of course some buttons there. So let's go back into this uh, certificate. Let's say scheduling and settings. No classes and lessons. I'm just going to copy this these two buttons here because that's going to happen. I'm going to paste them up here on the top. Then I'm going to go back into the general information. And I'm just going to clear put that in here and place that. It's going to be for our logo. I'm gonna add that and then probably increase the logo. Okay, so that looks good. So let me, I don't wanna add this. Let's use something else. I'm gonna cancel this. What we don't wanna do is assign the macro. There's already a macro assigned to this. So I'm gonna assign the macro and just clear that out. Whatever macro has been assigned, I don't wanna work with that. So add logo. We can use the add. Let's see something a little bit different here. Something for a change. Uh, I'm gonna bring this down. It's a little bit big for this type. So let's bring this down to maybe 0 0.23, 0 0.23. And then I'll bring it down again to maybe say 0.9. Okay, so let's, I've got another logo. I'm gonna insert a picture here and I've got just a little bit of a logo, a black logo. I think I had a white one here, that would be helpful. Oh, there it is, I got it now. Okay, insert, I'm gonna insert that white logo and I'm gonna make this, let's say 0.16, make it small enough. Put this as our logo so it's kind of a nice, we got the idea of a logo. And then I'll zoom in here so we can see it, kind of a smaller button so we wanna be able to work with it a little bit. And then, okay, good, I like that. And then we'll center those, and then I'm gonna group them. And then, of course, I'm gonna duplicate that. I want another one, and I wanna call this clear logo, and then I'm gonna use a different icon for that, clear logo. Okay, good, I like that, and we'll remove this icon, and I'll put this little trash can there and make sure these are both right justified there. Okay, good. And then we used the trash can icon before, didn't we? So we wanna make, make sure we use the same one again. Into the students, I think we used it here. We could've just used this clear picture I'm gonna use this logo right 
this little logo right here and then I'm going to paste it up here and then and I'm going to go into the admin here paste that down here okay so now we've got that logo but I'm going to shrink it up a little bit of course it's too big so for this purposes so we'll bring in point one four I think we're going to bring it smaller okay I like that there that's good again we're going to group these items and then group them and then I'm going to again let's say make sure that they're so both of them both of them clicking on both of them actually we'll probably group these together then I'll size up downstairs so I'm going to bring them down here space them out accordingly and I'll also bring some more space we don't want to we don't want to uh, increase the width so I'm going to drag them over here as I increase this column width I don't want to increase those so there we go that's what I want and now we can bring them back here now they're going to fit quite nicely all right good so now all I just want to do is group them and I want to give them a name so we can hide that group accordingly so there we go I'm going to group them together giving them let's just call this uh, general info group okay it's called info group making sure we hide that group and also anytime you group size and properties uh, move but don't size with cells under the properties move but don't size with cells that's important because if we move these columns I want to make sure okay so what I want to do is I want to use an add icon and that be able to add a logo onto this add logo and then clear it all so we're going to write some macros to do that but the first thing I want to make sure of is this particular anytime we change tab I want to make sure this is hidden so that's the first thing order of business we need to take care of in the admin tabs here now we're adding additional one we have class group so now again admin dot shapes this shape general for group dot visible equals MSO false and we want it displayed when we select select on the general info tab so remember I said we're going to be adding icons here equals and then MSO true okay so now we've got that so now it's going to be displayed accordingly and hidden and showed up okay so let's write the macros that are going to add that logo in okay back into the VBA and we're going to go in the admin miscellaneous and we're going to drop it down here all the way at the bottom this is where we're going to add our macro so we're going to call this sub admin and then we'll call it add logo add logo and then of course we want to make sure show logo I need one to show the logo so we'll copy this and we'll just call this show logo and then we'll call another one clear logo so or delete logo either way so this one's going to be show right I want to display that logo and then I'll another one for deleting so admin and then we'll just cut clear logo keep it consistent with the name okay so adding the logo how are we going to do that well the first thing is I want to dimension the picture file as a file dialog we did this before the picture path we did it before why not just copy and paste what we did before and then make it so we pretty much did it up here as you can see we, we hear on the icons and we adding an icon is very very similar so why don't we just do this copy this and then paste it accordingly so we can do that we don't need uh, everything exactly the way we have it so we'll just call this here file path okay and so I'm going to paste it all the way down here in here because a lot of it's the same okay so picture files a file dialog old path new path we're going to need that and that's important the application folder the icon name also we don't need that let's just we don't need the icon name here and so okay so that's good file name we might be able to use icon row we don't need that but uh, so let's move on so first thing what I do is I want to check for the uh, with the admin check to make sure that there's an application folder in a previous episode we covered that the application folder is located right here we need to make sure that there's a folder where we can copy and paste that into so that's very important we're going to need that in order to do that so that's the check so if we notice here it's a named range called app folder so it is that app folder that we're going to be checking to make sure that macro already does that it checks to make sure that it exists then we're going to sign the app folder as we did already a string located here to the app folder for the world now of course an if that now this one we're not going to use class icons obviously we're not adding an icon but we can just simply add it to the company folder it's just a single icon so we can add it to that so like this app folder vb directory we want to make sure that it, that uh, exists so in this case we really don't need any of this we can get rid of any of this right we're going to place that that logo directly in the main application folder so we're not going to be able to it. so the application so we're going to then set the picture file equal to application dialog folder the pick file is going to be select in this case we're going to call it a logo not an icon and then pictures all the same pictures go to no selection so now what we do is when we can see we the, we'll call this the picture path right I want to call this the picture path in this case I'd like to call it the picture path 
we're going to be taking and putting in directory. I want to copy that over basically. And so what I want to do is I want to just take only the file name, only the name of the file and put it in K7. So what I'm going to do is we're going to, when we want to show this, we're going to take the file name, not the file path, the file name located in K7, and I'm going to combine it with whatever's here. I'm going to add an additional backslash. That will give us the full path. And the reason this is important, because every single user is going to be sharing, it's going to be a Dropbox folder, not a desktop folder. Every single user is going to be sharing it. So every single user's link shared folder will be different. So their only specific shared folder combined with the file name located right here into K7, that will create a picture for them. So each unique user can create their picture based on the same file name, even though their individual file path is different. So that's how we're going to do it. So all I need to do is just copy it from its original location and put it in the, in the secondary location. So how do we do that? We have the picture path. So all we're going to call it file copy. But I want to, first I want to do is I want in K7, let's just say dot range, K7, I want to put the file name and only the file name. So how do we get that? Equals the directory of the picture path. That's going to give us the file name of that. So now that we have that, we are ready to go. Okay. Let's put in no selection down here at the bottom. No selection. In case if show equals negative one, they go to no selection. So no selection. We want to skip everything if they haven't made a selection. Okay, that's going to skip everything else. So K7 is going to take on the file name. Now what I want to do is I want to take its current location and copy it over to the application location, which is going to be that shared folder. We're going to use file copy for that. Then what are we going to copy? We're going to copy the picture path, the current path. Where do we want to copy it to? I want to basically copy it to what's called the app folder, right? We've defined the app folder here. App folder, and remember, also want a backslash and the backslash, and also, again, another and, and the directory of, again, the picture path. That's going to put that file name path. It's going to put that picture directly in that logo picture directly in that our main folder. That's all we're on. That's going to basically make a make a copy copy of the logo. Okay, good. And then the next up, we're going to run this macro, which is going to actually display it. So it's a different macro. So here I'm going to put that. So we don't need that here. We don't need the file name. You can use file name as well. File name going to be file copy file name old path very very similar so we we did there okay so show logo we got that so that's the macro i'm going to run to actually show the logo so now let's go ahead and write in this now all we need to do is just write a little bit of a mac so again let's do dimension the picture path as string dimension the picture path as string okay and also what i want to do is i want to make sure the Check again, I want to run this check again to make sure that we have an application folder when we're running this. If we don't have that folder that's located right here, then it's going to create problems. We've got to have that correct folder to make sure. Okay, so assuming that we do have that folder, then we can move on. So we're going to run that macro once again. And then again, with the admin sheet. And what do we want to do inside here? Well, the first thing I want to make sure of is we want to make sure that we have a picture that we're only on, that we're only displaying the picture only when general information. I don't want to display this picture when any other tab is open. How do we know that general information tab is only open? Well, the menu row is three. When I select another menu, it becomes four. So I only want to make sure if B3 isn't three, then I want to exit out of the sub. I only want to display it then. So if dot range B3 dot value does not equal three, then exit sub. Uh, display only on general info tab okay once we have that then we can move on okay so if for some reason there's a current logo right we want to delete it so i'm going to write on air resume next again what would that what's the name of that logo i'm always going to name it called just something called logo delete so if they we've changed out a logo we added a new one i want to make sure anyone's delete and then on air go to zero Okay, so now that we've deleted any possible existing logo, we're ready to move on to bring it. We want to make sure that K, if K7 is empty, of course we need it. That's our file name. If dot range K7 dot value equals empty, then exit sub. Nothing we can do unless we have a file name. Okay, so now we know we've got a file name here. We know we have a path for that. So now we can simply combine them and then display the picture. So the picture path is going to be equal to, again, it's called the app folder. We haven't defined it yet, so we should do that already. I want to make sure. Sometimes it works basically this bracketed, so but just in case, I want to make sure. So let's do 
app folder as string, okay? And then let's define it up here, app folder equals, okay? And then it's gonna be this here, app folder, okay? There we go, so now we've defined it. It is that bracketed folder, basically. It is this named range right here that we're referring to correctly here. Okay, so once we've got that, we can then define it in a string here, and then we continue to break it in. And, right, not, we're not finished yet, and the backslash, and again, what is located in, of course, here in K7. So we want to copy this here, and look at here. That is the full file path, full logo path. Once we have that path, we can then insert it. So with actually we're on with dot pictures dot insert and what are we going to insert picture path we got the full path now but we do want to check i'm going to make a check to make sure it's correct in the next line in the previous line dot name i want to set the name for it dot not comma dot name and then what is that name going to be equals again logo we want to make sure it's that same name logo okay not logos all right, so we've done that, but as I mentioned before, I want to check this picture path to make sure, just in case. So again, we'll use if, and then we can use something like directory, picture path, VB directory, equals empty, then exit, sub. That's just going to double check, exit, then exit, sub. Okay, so now we've made sure that that picture path is correct. So once we have it, now we can focus on that. Now that we've created a picture based on that path, we've called a logo, we can work with it. So with dot shapes what shape logo and now we can place it where we want to so i'm going to first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to lock the aspect ratio i want to make sure i don't want to change the orientation of that equals okay mso true i want to make sure that actual aspect ratio is locked and next up i want to know if it, the width is bigger or the height is bigger if dot width let's say is greater than dot height then right i'm going to set the width then then let's go down here dot width we'll set it to about maybe about 50 equals 50 else i want to set the height dot height i also want to set height maybe to about uh let's say 35. okay so now we've got that we've set the width and the height accordingly now what i want to do is i want to place it directly well where do i want to place it i want to place it basically inside here into let's slide over here into k4 k4 right but i do want it centered i want it centered between k column k and rows four five and six i want it completely centered so how do we do that again we've gone over this before but i'm going to go over it one more time or maybe more <laughs> equals so we can learn it better dot left equals the left let's put dot left because we're inside dot left equals okay now i want to know it's going to be the left starting what is the starting position it's the left position of k4 admin we need to go admin again because we're inside the dot shapes range k for the left position of k4 dot left the left plus something plus what plus i want to know the width plus the width of k the width of k plus so how do we know the width of k we're going to do admin let's do in parentheses admin dot range and then k column k through k i want to know the width of that column dot width so it's going to be that width divided by two minus the width of whatever the picture is minus the width and i'll explain this in a moment divided by two okay, divided by two that's it so what does that mean so basically let's just say for example let's say this width was 100 and let's say we had a the picture width was 50 let's say the width so what i want to do is i want to put 25 pixels on the left 25 pixels on the right so if i know the width of column k is 100 and i know the width of the picture is 50 if 100 minus 50 it equals 50 now i want to take that 50 and i want to divide it by two so i want to split 25 on the left side i want to split 25 on the right side so that's all we're doing we're dividing it by two so that's how we get this and we're going to pretty much do the same exact thing for the top so the top right first i want to determine equals right i want to know the top position. So it's going to be admin dot range k for the top position that's the starting point dot dot top and we're going to add something but how much are we going to add well, we're going to add basically the admin dot range in this case the range is going to be based on the rows and we're looking at rows four five and six so i wonder the height of all those rows so again let's put it inside here four quote four through six i want to know dot the height of the height of those what are the height of those rows Okay, so I want to minus the height of the picture, minus the height of the picture. 
Okay, so I'm going to take that and then divide that by 2. That is also going to give us the top position. Then the last thing is I just want to make sure it's visible. Dot visible equals MSO true. Okay, so that's it. That's how we place that logo picture directly in here. And we'll go into it. Let's do, this is the end width for our specific shapes logo. This is the end width for our sheet. So we're clearing up the spaces, saving our work. And let's take a look. Let's browse for a logo and take a look, see if we have any issues. So again, I'm going to take, hold down the control. I'm going to assign this, assign the macro. And what are we going to do? Admin. We're going to put add logo here. Admin, add logo. Click on that. Click OK. And then variable, picture path. We need to define that picture. Oh, file. Should be, let's take a look. Old path. We need to change this to picture path, too. And we don't use the new path, but that's OK. We're not using that necessarily. We, don't, we can get rid of that as well. We don't need that. OK, continuing on, range out of a member. So we can't use range, right? If we're still inside the picture folder, we need to specify admin, right? We're inside that, so we need to specify that to make sure we did it. Uh, let's make sure we did it here. Picture path, admin k7 equals the directory path. OK, we're inside that, so that's important. Still in the width. Probably can get out of the width. We don't use this here picture file we can get rid of that there we don't need that anymore so we don't there we go that's better either one is good now we don't need this because we're outside of the width okay continuing on and then and with okay so we need that end with one more end with for the sheet and with okay okay we're going to reset this back to what it was pictures okay take a look at this i got the black logo here that's the one i'm looking forward to click okay and then we're going to use dot height let's see equals okay we forgot the equals there okay let's take a look at this so i think we got everything there mm, this one why don't we why don't we update this one with the actual range instead of using that format because we're using the same variable here probably shouldn't be doing that same variable app folder app folder probably not a good idea but it will as long as we do this we're good to go okay range value all right good let's take a look okay and let's go ahead and now we've got add i'm going to do this right click here and then or just right click here i'm going to sign the macro click admin okay add logo click okay now we'll just click the add logo it's going to allow us to browse here's our logo we can add that and there it is perfectly okay that looks really good all we need to do is now clear the logo let's write a macro to clear the logo that's going to be super simple so in this case all we need to do is just pretty much do the same thing clear out what's in k7 and then just add this in so all we need to do is do this and then clear out what is in k7 so we're going to uh again we'll we can use this is such a simple one admin dot range k seven and then we'll do dot clear content and then I'll, i'm going to add this and then of course i'm going to add the admin sheet to this here and then specific because we're not using with sheets okay good so that's all we need to do for clear logo again taking this here right click clicking on both of those signing the macro here admin clear logo right here click ok clear logo okay add logo again putting it in here Okay, perfect. Now we've got our logo and it's perfectly centered. Very good. And just as with the other general information group, we always also want to hide this logo because if we switch tabs, we want that logo hidden. We don't want that showing. So how do we do that? We just, we know it's the name logo. Again, all we need to do is do it into the tabs, okay? So here we go. Inside the admin tabs, we're going to take that, just copy this, something like this, and just add the word logo onto that, right? We want to make sure it's hidden on any switch of any tab. And then if it's available, only if it's available, do I want to show it. So again, I'm going to copy this, I'm going to paste it down here. I'm going to put an on air and resume it because it might not even be available. I'm going to paste in here and go on air and go to zero. So what I'm going to do now is just show it. So basically, if the logo exists, display it in the general info. If it doesn't, then don't worry. So now it's hidden and we go back in here and it's displayed. So that's what we want. OK, so now we've got that. Let's take a look inside the scheduling settings. I've got some data in here we want to do. We want a weekday start. It's going to be probably something like uh, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Obviously, I want to know what weekday to start the schedule. On. So let's build this out. Let's just call this uh, weekdays. And then we're going to sign it this data validation here. So data, data validation here, list, going to call it equals weekdays. Yeah, it's the name range we just saw. Another way to do, get to it, if you want to look at it, you can always just use F3 and it's going to get to it right here. We can always find it in here, weekdays. Okay. So, all right. So, so now we got the weekdays. I also want to put the start times the end times and the scheduling intervals. 
Okay, so why don't we create a list of times? I want a drop down list of times, maybe every 15 minutes or something like that. I want to start it way down here, something you know off the screen. So let's start it on 50 here. So the first time, why don't we do 12 o'clock a.m. That's going to be able to do every single time, 12 o'clock a.m. Making sure that's formatted as a time, which it is. We want to make sure home, we want to make sure it's automatically formatted, com custom formats as a time. Good. That's what I want. And automatically do that. But now what I want to do is I want to do every 15 minutes. How do I know what 15 minutes is? 15 minutes is basically turned into a decimal. So we know if we know a day is one and how many hours, what about one divided by what if it's equals one divided by 24? That's per hour, right? So if I know one hour is this and I know 0 0.0041667, that's one hour. If I know that's one hour, what about 15 minutes? Basically, it is going to be equals this divided by four, right? Four, 15 minutes, four. So I know 15 minutes is this, 41667, this one right here. So copy that. I'm going to paste the value in there because I want that just that value. That's all I'm concerned about. So now if I want to know what 1215 is, it simply equals 12 a.m. plus this number right here, the pasting in this number. That's it, 1215. Now I want to do it. Go all the way down here, all the way down. What are we at? 3:15 a.m. We got a long ways to go. So drag it all the way down here. Where are we at now? 10:45. Wow, we got a long ways to go. Let's make sure. Oh, we went too far here. Went too far. Let's undo that. Okay, so 5:30 p.m. 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 We're going all the way to 11. Okay, here 11:45 p.m. Nothing else. We don't need anything. Else. Okay, so we've got it here. Not that one. 11 right here. 11. I want 11.45 p.m. So everything under that, I'm going to delete. 11.45 p.m. all the way from 12 a.m. That's what I want. I'm going to hold down that. I'm going to call that times. Okay, times. That's going to be our times. Okay, so now it is those times that I want to use. Those are the interval times. We don't need this anymore. So now we can go up here and we can assign them. So I'm going to hold down the control first and last times. And I'm going to go into the data data validation here and i'm going to say yes here because it's already done so basically i'm going to change this to a list value because i want to make sure it's right and say equals times okay there we go so now they can select between a drop down list so let's say they want to start it off at let's say 8 a.m or 7 7 7 a.m and then with the last class that ends maybe 5 p.m or something they can do that right here much easier and more it's much better because they're more strict on the times and when it comes to scheduling it's going to be really important what about that scheduling interval right how often do we want those scheduling intervals to be on our schedule what times do we want to show do i want to show every five minutes every 10 minutes every 15 minutes 30 minutes and so on so what i need to know is a drop down list on there and so Again, what I want to know is times. Let's good. Let's put this called schedule intervals. Take make a little table here. We're not using this area here, and make sure I spell that right. Intervals, okay. And okay, so what do I want here? I want to basically have the let's say the time and the decimal number. I want to have both, right? I want to have a decimal format. So again, as we mentioned before. I want to understand what it is. So our time, let's just say, we'll call it 10 minutes. That's enough. Uh, 15 minutes. And then I want, let's say, 30 minute. And then we'll do one hour. So those are going to be fine. So again, what is, again, one hour? What hour is what? It's equal to one divided by 24. That's our one hour, right? Our 30 minutes, again, is going to be equal to basically one hour divided by two. Okay, so we've got our 30 minutes, our 15 minutes, again, or one hour divided by four. And then our 10 minutes is one hour divided by six equals one hour divided by six. Okay, so we've got point, uh, point 0.417, point 0.208, point 0.104, and point 0.69. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. This is the table that I want to focus on. Because when they select a specific scheduling interval here, I want to be able to refer it to here. So this is our little table here that we've completed and that's going to help us out um, especially when we have to put the intervals so let's just call this intervals intervals so now we've got the intervals and they're tied to a specific decimal so we know how much to add to the times coming to the schedule and that'll come in handy a little bit later on okay so how do we do that so now all we need to do again is just go in here under data validation here and then again just put in list and then just put in again, if you're not sure of the name or you don't want to spell it, just click F3, click on intervals and click OK. Click OK. So now we've got the, so now, OK, we're good. We're set. Now we've got the weekday start. We've got the 
start time, the last time, and the intervals. Perfect. We're good to go. Let's just format those on the left side. Okay, one more tiny little feature. I want to be able to basically select on these and then I want to have them change. So let's do that. But first I'm going to add some conditional formatting because when they're unselected, I want that to go gray. So I'm going to add some conditional formatting. New. And then I'm just going to use a formula. Basically, it's going to be this, the first one, AY, but I'm going to make sure that the five is not absolute, so it's going to be for every row, equals blank. If it equals blank, then I'm going to format that. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a font color, maybe reduce that font color a little bit to a lighter gray. So I'm going to change that gray probably to just like this here, this gray too. That would be fine. And then we'll click OK. So something just to denote that it's definitely not. Maybe we'll italicize that or maybe we'll just do something else, a little bit of a fill. But if we fill it, I don't want to fill both those. I'll try it for now, see how it looks and if we can always change it. Something very subtle like that. OK, so when I select it or unselect it, it's going to be based on the selection change based on AY5 all the way through AY11. So let's take a look at that inside the code and then of course based on the admin selection change here. So again down here I'm just going to put it on school class days change. On school day change. Okay if not we're going to base it on AY5 again all the way to AY11. So AY5 through AY11 is nothing. Okay, I want to make sure that then what do we want to do? Okay, so again, if the target dot value equals empty, then the target dot value equals character 252, 252. That's the checkbox. Else target clear contents. Else target if it's not empty, target clear contents. Okay, that should be it. Let's take a look at that. So now we can just update it. The only other thing you might want to do is uh, select something else. So let's do AV4. Let's just select that so that we can select that. So again, let's see, range, just any other cell is fine. AV, AV4 dot select. Okay, good. So all right, that's it. We're done with that. So that's the last thing that I wanted to add on the admin screen. Very, very good. So now we've got everything completed for the admin screen this week. Now we are ready to move on to the classes. Let's start building the classes. Okay, now we're ready to design the classes. Class is going to be really cool. It's going to be a little bit different how we've done uh, teachers and students and stuff like that. We've got a completely blank screen, so certainly we're going to need to work on that. I'm going to go to the teachers, basically, and I'm just going to get, make a copy of this here. And actually, I'm going to make this part eight. We are now in part eight, so I'm going to update this as well. And uh, just so we have a clear header, I'm going to copy the entire sheet, clicking on the upper left cell, copy. And inside the classes, I'm just going to paste in here. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that all the shapes are visible. So I'm going to click on here. I'm just going to click show all, making sure, just ensuring that everything's visible. I want to see all the shapes on the sheet. Okay, so now we can get ready to customize this. It's going to be quite different. We're not going to tab, so we're going to do, it's going to be a little bit of work. Obviously, we want the menu, the menu is going to be adjusted here, so it's not going to look like this. We need to expand it just as we have here. We're not on teachers, so we're going to be on classes. So the first thing we want to do is clearly show this menu to, to properly, what it is properly. So let's do that. So let's go ahead and customize this accordingly. So the first thing I want to do is take on this classes and we'll drop this format since we're going to be using it a lot. I'm going to add the, the usual white fill in. So classes are going to be in. Of course, that font is going to be that standard blue color that we're going to we're going to bold that so we see that. And also we're going to reverse the teacher. So this particular one is going to go back to our black fill here. The font's going to go to our white. And also, we don't want to make it bold. Okay, so we've got that. Also, I want to update the icon. So I'm going to take this entire group here and I'm going to ungroup it here so we can work with the shapes individually. This particular teacher icon, we are not going to use. So we're going to delete that. This particular class icon, we're going to delete that. So we're not going to need that. I'm going to rename this. Let's call this classes. I think I want to capitalize these classes. Okay. And also, I want to import the icon for both for teachers. And we've got the teacher here. That's kind of convenient and also the classes. So we had the teacher behind that and that was helpful. So the classes, I need a blue icon for the menu and I need one for the top. So why don't we import that? I'm going to insert the picture here. We're going to focus on this. I've got this class one here available for us. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to reduce that font. Let's see, we can probably to about 0.6 or something like that. 
probably going to need it less here, but we're going to need it for also the menu and the menu. If we want to know what we're looking at, we're just going to format this 0.25 on this one. So I'm going to control D duplicate this one here, and then I'm going to make this one 0.25. It is that one that we're going to use inside the menu. We want to make sure that we're naming this teachers, right? We want our classes instead, just as we did with this button. So we want to make sure that everything's named. And again, if we try to rename this as it is, it's going to revert back to the button because it's already notice how it revert back and it didn't rename this but if you want to rename it just click on here whatever you've selected classes we also want to make sure that we've renamed everything else this this one also need, needs to be renamed oh this is part of the logo it's not so important everything else needs to be named this classes because of our macro has to be the same as what the name of the sheet there because we're using the name of the shape to point to our sheet so when we click on it it goes directly to that sheet all right we're good with that we want to make sure i want to make sure this one here is set to teachers it is that's good that's the way i want it okay so we've got everything pretty much on the menu the way we want it again want to, we can line it up to make sure clicking on our selection holding down this and then i'm just going to line them up here horizontally to make sure everything's lined up and then of course the menu here I'm gonna update that just to make sure we're good on that and I'm gonna raise this one. Oh, don't mean to do that back into class is easy so holding down the control will make sure before you select that you're gonna update that so we've got that there I'm gonna move this up a little bit now we're good on the menu so what I want to do is I want to make sure that everything's assigned properly again I'm going to select everything using our selection tool I'm going to group it I'm going to give it a name called menu also I'm going to go into the right click go into the properties we've been over this before making sure that we're moving but not sizing with the cells okay that way when we size a column it's not going to size although in this case it would not be so bad if we resize the column but we want everything consistent okay the last thing is I want to assign the macro now this macro is already assigned to most of them but just to ensure we're going to take that entire group and we're going to assign a macro so we're going to call it menu that's the macro go to sheet once we assign this macro to the entire group it then assigns that macro to each individual shape within the group so the group itself doesn't actually have when we click on that it doesn't actually have it. However, when we click on any individual shape within the group and then check the assigned macro, we can then see that the appropriate macro has been assigned. Go to sheet. Okay, so now it's working. So now when we click classes, everything's going to work just fine. We undo our selection and we click classes scheduling okay that's working good we don't have the scheduling yet obviously and back to the admin and we can do classes okay so that's good but now we've got to start customizing this we can close this up it can be very very different right this particular one um, is going to have a, a tab but we're going to do it in a different way because we have some new challenges and then I'm going to show you how we overcome those challenges so you got to stick with us on this one here so what I want to do basically is I want to have a list of active classes here when I select on a class here I want that class information to show up on the right also on the right side I want to have a list of students enrolled in that class I also want to have some tabs here so it's gonna be a challenge because we've got a list here a fixed list I want this list to stay no matter what tab we click and I want this list this uh, class list to stay regardless of the tabs too so let's write that up and see what that might look like okay so what I'm going to do is just gonna copy this here use this as a format and I'm gonna put it up here probably in say let's say e4 so e4 here and I'm gonna paste it and we're gonna call this class list so my list of classes is going to be here class list okay so my list of classes is going to be here but i don't need that merge and center i just need a single row so let's drop this down here center this so our class list is going to go here and then our general information is going to go here for our classes but we're going to have a button set up here something similar to here but i'm not going to use this so let's just delete that let's uh, format that and then we'll just do no borders on that so I want to clear so we're going to use this here let's end that we don't want to I don't want to run that so again I don't want to run the macro so I'm going to click on everything here making sure that everything and I don't want to run any macros in fact I want to clear the macros so assign the macros and then just delete I want to make sure that our button sets doesn't have any macros because when we're working with it we don't want to do what I just did which was click that okay so again same thing here we don't want to click any macros assign the macros clearing it and clicking okay okay so now obviously we're not on teacher so in this particular case we're not going to have an update button so i'm going to remove that why is that well because when it's an existing assuming it's an existing class i just want to simply save the changes as we make the changes if it is a new class we will have save class so we're going to use this button instead of teacher it's going to call it class 
cancel new is fine, but obviously we want we don't want delete teacher, we want delete class in this case. So let's put that in. Okay, so we've got delete class and again, new class, not teacher, class. And also I wanna rename these buttons, these groups of buttons, but let's uh, update these particular sizes. So the width in this case would be 1.1 here. All right, so now what we want to do is I want to rename this group and we'll bring this over here since we're just going to have these two buttons. It's going to be for existing. So I'm going to bring this over here, make it a little bit closer together and then also align these. I don't believe these are aligned. So I'm going to hold down the control, making sure they're aligned horizontally like that. This is called existing teacher group. I'm going to change it to existing class group just as we did. This repetition is going to help you build these applications much, much faster than you normally would as we continue to do that because you'll know the next steps automatically it just becomes automatic and that's what i want for you i want this these creating these applications to become automatic so you can create a lot more and of course make a lot more money sell them to your customers or sell them online okay so we've got save classes is going to be called new class group right these applications are built basically on the same fundamentals just different components so once we understand those components and fundamentals it's much easier to build okay so we've got two different groups new class group we're only going to be displaying one at a time that's why we can put them directly on top of each other existing class group if you don't want to if you want to select them and they're over each other and it's a little bit harder all we need to do is just simply go into our menu we can select existing class group obviously the high teacher list button this particular button we're not going to need so we can go over that we're not going to have a teacher list our class list is going to be on the left so we can show teacher list button we don't need that we can delete that we can go we will need the new class group and existing class group we've got both of those and so we can go a clear filter button again we're not going to need that there's not going to be in this picture is just going to be the icon that is fine and we're good to go on that okay so we have this however in this particular one what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be again hiding and showing individual columns right so if i'm going to be as opposed to rows so if i'm going to be hiding and showing columns I need this classes to be not inside a cell but I need to be in a text box we did something like that I believe it was in students or uh, admin actually we didn't in admin notice admins a text box so why don't we just copy that and bring it over to the classes and then I'm just gonna paste that in right here so instead of this we're just gonna call it classes just as we would now we can overlay that directly on clear the text here delete that and it looks exactly the same but it acts a little bit differently so what i want to do now is just simply group those here group this header together and then also we can in this case we are going to both don't move or size with cells i'm going to group them together we can just call this header class header group but the name is not so important because we're not going to be using that in VBA but it's good to know when you see shapes on your menu go header group it's good to know what they are so again I'm going to right click this go into the size and properties and I'm going to make sure in this specific case I want to make sure we're not moving or sizing with cells if I move these columns I don't want to move this class group here okay we can center it over our menu but we may that may change as time comes okay so I've got a class list here now what I want to do is I want to put general info here in this case I want to put in scheduled classes so basically if we create a class right and then I want to know once we save that class it's going to generate a bunch of scheduled classes so let's say we have one once a week for four months it's going to create probably so let's say 16 different classes automatically then we can work with those classes individual basis so that can be really really helpful also I want to know the exams quizzes uh, tests and everything that's been assi assignments but I'm but we for lack of space, I'm just going to put exams and quizzes here, and then we'll expand on that once with quizzes. So this is going to be individual tabs. That's going to be about it. I don't think we need, we theoretically could add attachments to this, uh, scanned in documents, mm, maybe, yeah, you know, now that I think about it, it might be kind of helpful. But we have exams and quizzes, right? So if we have attachments, but there would be a lot of uploads, basically students, so I'm not sure about having attachments, but it could be quite helpful let's keep attachments right where it's at because I think it's going to be helpful for teachers to upload specific lessons or specific quizzes or something like that it could be really helpful now we have email and quizzes but maybe we have some scanned in items so that could be helpful okay so what do I want to do so basically what I want to do is on this side now let's get rid of this let's unhide this we don't need this lesson so I'm gonna zoom out a little bit we don't need any of this so I'm gonna delete this and then just clear all of this out here because we don't need any of that in fact I want to make sure there's no conditional formatting down here so I'm just gonna clear that out and then I'll unmerge any cells and then a conditional formatting 
And then if there's any clear roofs from selected cells, we don't need that. And then I'll color gray, delete the text, and then remove all the borders here. Okay, because we're going to use this space here. So basically what I want to do is instead of a table down here, what I want is to have is a table here. But let's design our first general info. And then what we'll do is we'll leave a few columns here, and then we'll go to the next and next. And we'll design it horizontally and not vertically as we've done the past. This class list is going to remain, and I also want a student list on the left. So what do I want inside this general info section? So the first thing that I want, of course, is we're going to have a class name. I need that. Let's zoom in a little bit so we can see it. So class name, we need that. And then next up, I'm going to have the assigned teacher. That's obviously important. Assigned teacher. Of course, his name is going to be Fred, none other than that. And then also, I'm going to have a subject. So we'll put in a subject here. Okay, we can probably do anything. And then I'm just going to uh, format this as a table. Let's see. Sorry, cell styles here. And then field. I think it's this field style here. Okay, so let's just put English or something like that so we can kind of keep track of what we have. And then the class name, let's just put again English 101. Let's say, let's say English fall because 2021, just to get an idea so we have the right information. Okay, we'll unmerge and center this. We don't need that there. And next up, I'll put the term, right? There's a term. We have terms. Terms are based on that. If we remember correctly, we've set terms here inside our scheduling here. Terms is here. So basically, each term is assigned a from date and to date. So when I select a term, that from date and to date is going to be automated. So that's what I want inside the classes. So we'll have the term, and then I'm going to have the from date and to date. So I'm going to put the from date here, date, because I want to know when it starts. When does that class start? Of course, that's customizable extra space there from date and then a to date so i want that so that's perfect so we'll have that based on the term so if i change the term here let's just say fall 2021 whatever that might be then it's going to change that here so I, I like the idea there better okay next up what i want to have is probably the year or level year or level we have that inside there we have a drop down list of year or level Let's just say fourth grade or whatever it is here. And then also not state, obviously, but room or location, room or perhaps location. If there's a different room or location, we're going to have those inside the scheduling. And then, OK, that's good. I'm going to put something different down here. So this is going to be different. Let's delete this. I don't want that. Next up, maybe I'm going to have the start time. I need to know when it's going to start, what time that class should start, because that's going to need to go on our scheduling start time okay and then also the duration how long is it going to be so we'll have a different duration list down here i want to know if we have a specific awarded awarded certificate awarded do we is there once we, that this class complete is there a specific uh certificate that's going to get awarded awarded certificate we can abbreviate that and is there a minimum score is there a minimum score to receive that certificate right? based on all the tests and quizzes or something like that we need to automate that score or grade maybe there's a grade a minimum grade so we can check that this i'm going to put in something different we're going to clear that out i'm not going to put clear that out and then also uh, once we have the one i want to know what class type it is class type and also, if we have, let's say, the total enrolled. I want to know the total enrolled, how many people were enrolled in that. That's going to be based on a specific formula. So I'm going to not. That's not going to be user editable. OK, so in this area here, I want to put in the frequency. So what I'm going to do is just probably bring this down here. I want to know how frequent we're going to put. It. So I'm going to drop that down here. I'm going to put in weekly frequency here. and. Let's drag it over here. Not quite there. I don't want it there. Let's put it up here for a second and then bring it down here. I'm going to put it down here. Okay, so we have, a, a, let's say, our Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday is going to be here. So I'm going to drag these down here. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday here, Thursday. So then I'll put a check box just as we had done previously in other screens. And then I want to know when this is going to be scheduled, how many days, which days of the week this class is going to happen on. OK, and then again, I'll probably keep that conditional formatting, bring this down here to a smaller and then we'll put in a checkbox. So let's just say we have I'm going to bring it all the way down here, drop it like this. OK, good. I like that. So now we're just going to format those cells. I'm going to put a dotted line border in the middle and then surround it by that single black border. Actually, this single black border here. OK, and then the single border on the middle there. OK, so basically we've got the how frequency and I'm going to change this to wingdings font and then we'll put a check mark so it's going to be something like let's say insert symbol 
right? This checkbox, character 252, that we're using frequently. And then we're going to close that out. Okay, so then I'm going to just copy this down here, and I'm going to have it something like that. So we know when that class is scheduled. I also might as well do the conditional formatting now. And then we'll go, because I think there's some that's already there. But we just have to update it. Okay, so we can delete all those rules, and we just need one here. So all we need is one. And we're going to base it on this top. So let's move this over here. And uh, let's edit the rule. And it's going to be based on, in this case, we're going to base it on an M11. M11. M11 here does not equal, okay? And then the applies to is going to be based on all these. So let's go down here. It's going to be based on L. So let's click apply. And then we do have to make sure we just change. Notice it changed automatically. So we need to go back to M. Once we change the applies to, sometimes it does update. So click OK and then apply and then click OK. So if we delete one, then automatically it's going to go to grade. That's what I want. OK. So, and let's say we want this Monday, it's Tuesday, and whatever. So that gives us an idea. So that's perfect. That's just what I like. This is going to be nothing here. So I'm just going to actually bring this down here. Nothing here. It's going to be empty. And then we can close out this. So I do want something here. This is not going to be Merchant Center. So I'm, instead of teacher's notes, we're going to have class description and notes on this one. And this one, in this particular screen, we're not going to reduce these columns. I want the call, oh, excuse me, I don't want to reduce the rows. So we can put this back to like, let's say 10, something a little bit bigger. Left justify that. And then I'm going to bring them down to about here. So just here. So merge and center that left and upper, which is the way I want. And now what I want to do is I want to create some fields here. So I'm just going to copy this here and paste it down here. And uh, let's see just two of them. Actually, we don't need that much. I'm going to undo that. Probably just three rows. So here, we're going to go with just three rows because I only have three fields that I want to add. So merge and center that. Wrap text is good. Upper and left. OK, so here I'm going to put max students. I want to know how many max students they have. Here I'm going to put class icon. I want to be able to select a class icon. And here I'm going to put in class color. I want to select a specific color for that class. That's it. That's all. This is going to be nothing here. So we're just going to delete this. I don't need anything here. And I'm going to drag this over here and then we'll just put the bottom border here. Now we can wrap the border here. Okay, good. I'm going to format those cells. Sorry, it's off the screen. Putting this border in on the bottom here and the side. And good. So we're going to increase this a little bit. So now we've got a nice little screen, at least for our general info, it's starting to come together here. This can be merged and centered. This can be merged and centered to bring it out. Merge and center. And then on the left side, and then we're going to put that border around it. Oh, all we need to do is click cell styles and click that field. All right, good. So back to the date. That's actually going to be a date field. Short date. We'll cover it. OK, so we have the weekly frequency. We'll be able to select on that. Let's uh, create this. The room or location. Again, this can be merge and centered. The duration can be, although we don't need it that long. And also the minimum score grade and the total enrolled. Those can all be merge and centered. And then we can reduce this a little bit so we don't need it that big. OK, I like the way that that's looking now. We've got a nice little field here, a nice little form that we're going to be covering. And then we can build it out. OK, so what I want to do is I want to put the class ID up here. So enter class ID. That's what the user is going to be into that. So I'm going to make this. This is going to be a cell style based on our label style. This is going to be based on our field style here, our field. OK, so they'll be into the class ID, and then it'll load up. Or they can select a classroom here. And then in this column, not this specific column, but a proximity to this column, we're going to have all of our enrolled students. But not, it'll look like it's in this column, but it won't be because we've got a lot of other stuff to add into that. OK, so in the idea in this particular type of screen is we're going to actually kind of fake the tabs here. So I want to format this. Let's update the uh, borders on this so we can get everything correct on this one. And then we'll move on from that. Just a solid border on the top, bottom, middle. OK, so we're good on that. So what I want to do is basically um, format this particular one here, similar to the tabs. But in this case, we're not going to use conditional formatting. In fact, if there is any conditional formatting, I'm going to clear that out just in case. We don't need uh, any conditional formatting on that because we're going to actually force it. So formatting the cells, what I'm going to do is add a fill effects onto this one that is going to be similar to the conditional formatting, but different. And so in this case, what we're going to do is I'm going to use a gradient fill from our medium to our light, our standard back color in this one. 
And also what I'm going to do is add in some fonts, bold, and then I want this black on this one, okay? So that's what I want it to look like. So again, it looks like that, make sure that bottom border. So we're giving the effect of that. So what I wanna do now is copy this, and then I'm gonna paste this out. So I can have another tab, probably starting in somewhere around O, and keep one column, we're good on this one, and I'm gonna paste this in here. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is, but I also wanna make sure that I'm not only copying the uh, specific, I also wanna copy the column, the header. So I'm gonna copy that, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paste the column widths. I only wanna focus on those column widths. So in this one, right, paste special, we're gonna focus on just the column widths. I want those column widths exactly like they are in the original ones, okay? That's important to keep that so we can keep that consistency. Of course, this isn't general information. We're focused on scheduled classes. So I'm gonna copy this one, and I'm gonna paste the special and paste those formats there. So I want this format here, and of course on this one, I'm gonna copy this one and paste it back paste special and format. So I, in the essence is we're going to fake the tabs. They're all gonna be the same, but if we're just gonna, when we click here, we're gonna have this section show up. So inside this schedule classes, I'm gonna put some a little bit of a table. So I can drag this table up here and then we can modify it accordingly. So since we have it already, so I gotta do just that. So I'm bring it up here. And then I'm down here, I don't think we really need anything else. I can keep duplicating the tables, so we're good on that. So I'll just clear everything out, clear all the formats of that. So we actually, the attachments I'm going to be using, we might as well just use that. I'm gonna keep that, we're gonna drag that up. That's gonna be the last one, so we might as well keep that consistent, everything else. So we'll keep the attachments there, and then I'll drag that up as soon as we're ready to bring that in. So in the scheduled area, right, the schedule, this particular tab or section or or section of columns so I'm gonna have, I wanna know when, and we're not gonna call it a scheduled payments, of course, we're gonna call it scheduled classes. So scheduled classes, this particular tab. Inside this, we're gonna have the scheduled on. I wanna know when it's scheduled on. And I also wanna know the start time, start time. These are the individual class scheduled classes that we are going to have. So start time on that. And also I want to know uh, the, uh, let's say the duration of it, duration, as well as the teacher. I may, you know what, so notice this is a smaller tab. I may reverse these tabs. I'm not, I'm just gonna put them in, but we may not have this exact order. Attended, we wanna use this as a smaller column. Attended, how many students are, have attended this? And then notes, and again, we'll keep some flexibility as far as the order. We may change the order a little bit. I may uh, put, change it around a little bit, but we get the idea. So basically we just kind of have a tab and then we have the numbers there. Okay, so what about exams and quizzes? I'm just gonna copy this. In this case, what I wanna do is I just wanna keep a couple columns open, right? I wanna have some flexibility in that. So why don't we, I don't think we're gonna use it all, but let's go ahead and put this one on, let's say Y. Okay, so I'm gonna, on Y5 here, I'm just gonna paste it in. Now, in this particular case, this is going to be our exams and quizzes, right? Exams and quizzes. So again, copying it. Again, I want to also do the column list, especially the first four columns, right? I want to keep that very consistent throughout. So I'm going to copy, again, copy that, pasting in those column lists just as we did here, just like this. The rest can be a variable, but they're going to be similar. So paste special and then paste that column width here. Of course, this is not... Uh, we're gonna copy this and this format's gonna take on the exams and quizzes. Paste special and then formats. And then again, this copy this and then paste special and then paste those formats here. So that way we get the look of the exam. So this is exams and quizzes. For this particular tab, what I want to do is I want to add additional information here because it's not just it's gonna let's, let's call it exams, quizzes, tests, and assignments. So we want everything to go in there and we'll add additional so that we can add. We want to have a button here eventually to add additional and delete. We'll probably select out of one and remove them, but the ability to add specific assignments to test or, or drop down list or something like that. So first thing we have is name and then also we have assigned on when it was assigned, assigned on. There may be a due on. When is it due? Due on a specific date. I also want to know who assigned it. Assigned by. And I want to know, is there a specific score or limit? What is the maximum score limit? That's going to help us determine what the grade to be assigned is on that limit. And then again, we can have notes here. And we can have a few other columns if we need it. If not, we can remove these so we have some flexibility. I just want to add some extras. It gives us some freedom. So we really need that. And then lastly, what we want is attachments. Again, so we have a few extra columns. Why don't we add that attachment? I'm going to zoom out and then take this attachments here that we have here. 
we've got it right here. This is our attachments here. So we have that already built in. And then all I need to do is just drag this one all the way up here. Say about right uh, here, give a few, there we go. So zoom in, then we got attachments there, starting in AI. And again, last thing we're gonna do is just simply copy this. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna paste it right here, also in AI5 right here. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this up. We need to bring it up one row here so we can have a, there we go. I like that. So we can unmerge those cells and then merge them back, it's fine. All right, so we've got that copying this here, pasting the formats in it just as we've done before. And then of course, copying this here and then pasting the formats back in here, paste special. And you know the next step already and that is gonna duplicate those specific column widths, right? So let's do that. Again, copying these four first four and then pasting in the special, copying and then pasting those column widths because I want those first four column widths to match automatically, paste special and then those column widths here. Okay, great, so now everything's the same. So now we've pretty much got everything the way we like it. Let's add some additional formatting on here and some borders. So I wanna add a format those cells here and some borders across on the top and the right and then I also want to add a left border on to the right that's going to give us that full look that full tab feel which is what we want what we're looking for so that way it's got a close out tab feature and we can do the same thing for the bottom here formatting those cells we may want to increase it let's increase it exactly as is the previous one and we're going to make sure that this one also okay so everything's got the last row which is 28 that's what i want formatting those cells sorry it's off the screen let's go up here formatting those cells and then adding that bottom border here okay now that we've got that bottom border now we've got a consistent we've got a consistent tab look attachments we have exams and quizzes but lastly i want to add additional right the last thing i want to do is add in those enrolled students that's that's really important because I want that enrolled students to be visible regardless of the tab that is selected. So here, in, in fact, here I'm going to put in, I'm going to copy this and I'm just going to paste it right here inside probably the same, what I want is the same consistency as this starting on four. So instead of class list, I want to enroll students and this is going to be visible regardless of the tab. So inside, right inside here in AR4, I'm going to paste that in and we're going to call this enrolled students. We want to show this regardless of the tab. We can expand on that because the student names can be a bit larger. Okay, so I'm gonna format this cells, put the borders all the way around it, and then we'll add in some, uh, not the white border, actually, let's go black border all the way around it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna have conditional formatting, but we'll add that in. Let's get the tab structure done right now. So when I select on these, what I wanna do is basically hide everything here, except this group. These groups are gonna remain here hiding these columns here and then showing whatever based on that so we're ready to go let's save our work and let's go into the developer and then make those changes and make those add that code to make that happen okay so into the vba editor we go we're going to create another module so i'm going to click in insert module we're going to call this classes miscellaneous at least to give us a start or classes macros classes macros and then we can start out. So I want to start out with just some tabs. And then what we'll do is we're going to basically hide everything and then show them accordingly, just as we did with the other tabs, but it's going to be slightly different in that. Okay, so the first thing what I want to do is just write in, uh, we've got, again, four different tabs. So we've got, let's bring this up here so we can see it. Classes, we got general info, classes, uh, exams and quizzes and so on and so forth. So let's write some sub, sub, class, tab. Everyone's going to start with that. And then we're going to call this general info and then i'm just going to copy and paste it and make those customizations obviously we can't have macros with the same name so we'll be changing that this one we're going to call enrolled students i want to know which ones are enrolled here are scheduled sorry scheduled classes and then also i want to know exams and quizzes so sub exams quizzes we'll call this exam quizzes and then the last one of course we're going to have is attachments because that's important we want to know what's detached and then lastly i can attachments okay so now we've got the outline laid out here now we can start adding in the information so basically inside these tabs all i want to initially want to do is just simply show columns because in our on sheet code we can actually do all the rest of the code so in this specific we're just going to start out with showing the columns in this case i want to show columns let's say g through n um, let's just say g through m in this one so admin dot range g through n call it or m and then dot entire column dot hidden 
equals false, right? We're unhiding those columns. So now all I need to do is just copy and paste this down below into each individual macro and here too, sorry, general info, this is the one I want. Classes, of course, is different, so let's update that. Classes, we're gonna actually show, in this case, O through V, O through V. That's what I wanna display here, O through V. So all we need to do, again, is in the classes, O through V, and then inside our exams and quizzes, we're going to show why, and then what is the last column, why I want to display and we're going to call this AF, Y through all the way through AF. Bring that. And then lastly, the attachments. That's the one we want to show. That's going to be AI through AP. AI through AP. And I'll make that change. AI through AP. So now that we have that, we need to write the rest of the code. So we've got general info, scheduled classes, exams and quizzes, and attachments. So inside our classes sheet, so now we've got a classes here, so it's inside this that we're gonna make those changes. So we need to do it a little bit differently. So worksheet, we're gonna base it on selection change. So if the user makes a selection on any one of the following, we need to then do something. So basically it's gonna be these ranges here. So it's always gonna be five. So if the user makes a change, we're starting out with any change, any selection change based on G5, through J5, so that not only that, so if not intersection, then, okay, so we can complete that loop. This is gonna start out with G5, based on selection change, G5 through J5. That's only the beginning, right? We still need to cover the remaining. What else? Of course, we're gonna cover O through R, O5 through R5. Okay, that's for the second tab. And then the third tab, okay, that's fine, right? We don't need that yet. And then the third tab is going to be focused on Y through AB, also on 5. Y through AB, also on 5. So let's update that. Y, 5, through AB, 5. We do need to make the update. Okay, and the last one, of course, the last one, we're going to do an attachments, and that's going to be based on, of course, AI through AL. AI through AL. Making that change here. Comma, AI, 5, through AL5. So now we've known if they select on any one of those, we want to do something. Well, what is it that I want to do? I want to basically hide all the columns. I want to hide everything from AP all the way from G. So G through AP, everything should be hidden. But before we do that, I want to make sure that screen updating is false. That's going to help reduce some flashes. So application dot screen updating equals false. And then we're going to turn it to back to true after we finish, but we can write that in right now. Just copy that and then bring it down here and then just paste that in and make sure it's true. Okay, so inside that, now what we need to know is we need to determine which ones to hide. So again, G all the way through the last one, which I forgot now, you guys are supposed to remind me. G through AP, that's what we're hiding, okay? I wanna keep AQ visible all the time. That's gonna be our spacer, okay? I wanna keep that in here. So G through AQ and I wanna hide everything else. So G through AP and hide everything else. Moving back into the dim, so again, range, range G through G through A P entire column right entire column hidden equals true entire column dot hidden equals true we're hiding everything okay now what we need to do is we need to know which ones to show so this is a little bit tricky if they click on let me just fix that that dinner um, still got a macro assigned to that. Okay, let's just update. We've hidden everything, which is good. It worked just fine, which is not what I wanted to do at the moment, but you get the point. So let's just, let's unhide that. So it worked just now. And now what I want to do, it, it hit everything exactly the way I wanted it to. So what I want to do now, in this case, when they select, it's working fine. When they select on this, I want to show if they select keep doing that so here's what we here's what happened we selected on something right on I selected on an entire column but it activated the macro we don't want that to happen how can we avoid that if selecting out well it's easy just right down here under this if target dot dot count large count large is greater than let's say two then exit Sub. That means nothing's going to happen when the user selects more than that. So now if I select an entire column, nothing's going to happen. Okay, that helps us avoid that error. Okay, saving our work, saving it often is always a good practice. So if they select on, I keep doing that, if they select on G5, 
I'm, I'm not going to G5. I'm not going to select on it myself. If they select on O5, Y5, or AI5, we're going to run the same exact macro. Again, G5, A5. Let's go through those, and then we'll, and then we'll go ahead and copy and paste and make this a little quicker. So again, if not intersection, something specific, G5, okay, there's four different cells that are going to run the same macro, G5, and then this case was O5. Also, this case was, uh, let's bring it up here, and then also the last two, G, oh, we have O5, and then the last two are Y5 and AI5. Those are all four for the general info, Y5, Y5, and of course, AI5, AI5. And then what do I want to do? Then I want to run the macro that's going to do that general info. So how do we do that? So then it was class tabs and class tab underscore general info. All in lowercase. If it changes to uppercase, which it did, we know we've got the macro right. That's going to run our general info. G505. So now all I need to do is just copy and paste that for the remaining four and then update the ranges and update the macro that's going to run. So now we have class tab. Of course, this is going to be the second one's going to be for scheduled classes. Scheduled classes is the one I want to run. And then we need to update the associated range that's going to be focused on that. So let's do that. So then this is called scheduled classes. If I get the name right, if I remember correctly, it's going to update. It's not. So if I put in class schedule, I forgot the name, the uh, H there. So notice it didn't classes. If I did, if I get it right, it should change it. There we go. So change it all to upper class. The third one, of course, is our exams and quizzes. So let's update that. And then we're going to update the ranges. Exams. I'll use lowercase exams, quizzes, and uh, see if that was right. Good. And then the last one is attachments, which I remember. Attachments. Lowercase, changing to uppercase, then we've got it right. Okay, so now all we need to do is just, so we know if this is G, this is going to be H. All we need to do is increase one. Element P, of course, comes after that. And then Z, and then we have J. So now we have the next. Now all we need to do is, and in this case, it's going to be I, right? We're going to go Q, A, A, and then K. So that's how we do it. A, A, and then K. Let's double check that, right? A, A. And then the last one would be, of course, AK. Perfect. So the last one, then we have one more to do. And then we're going to be done with these tabs. Then, it, and of course, it's now J, right? Focus on J. This is R. This is AB. We're just increasing one from the previous one. And this is AL. OK, take a look. Let's look back inside the, the macros here in the classes tab. Take a quick look. Oh, <laughs> admin. No, 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 Randy. Update that. Obviously not admin. OK, and then we're going to change that to classes, classes, wrong sheet. OK, replacing all. OK, we're good to go inside four of them. All right, let's take a look now and uh, update that. We can close that out and general info. That looks good. Scheduling classes. That looks good. Admins attachments. All right. Everything looks very nice just the way I like it. So general information. So we now we see how those columns. The only thing that we might want to do is we kind of want to get this part. Notice how this right and take a look at the next one. It's kind of big. So we kind of want to keep that enrolled students in the same place. Right. So what we can do is I want to increase this one. We just need to increase the space of this a little bit, increase the space of this a little bit. I want everything to end up exactly in the same. In other words, I want enrolled right here on the screen. So notice enrolled is all the way over here. So we should probably reduce this a little bit. Right. So it gives us an idea. I want them in the same exact place so that it has that nice look that it's look like we're actually changing the tabs. And so but we I'll, you, we can monkey with it to make sure it's exactly perfect. But you get the idea. We want enroll to be in the same place. We don't want it moving over. That's OK, but it's not perfect. But we'll get it perfect. Don't worry about that. You don't need to watch me get it perfect. But you get the idea. This enroll should be in the same location. OK, so now we can do this. So now we're good. We can just let's reduce this. There's nothing else we need to do with this. So again, all I want to do is just make sure we clear everything out. I'm going to clear all and then I'm just going to change that format just to that gray background fill. That's going to be our standard because we're not going to use that. OK, so now we've got to create a really cool list. And notice how our enrolled students always on here and our class lists are always on here. So what I'd like to do is add some conditional formatting so that as we add classes here or as we add students here, 
it builds it out so we can enroll students and then what we'll do is we'll delete students on selections if we want to we can have a drop down list of students so that's easy to add so what if i want to have a drop down list now i can continue my students we have the ability so now we have all this free room down here if we want to add a lot of students we can but let's just go ahead and select maybe up, up to this many and i'm going to add in some data validation on that and i want to add those basically students a list but what students I want to add the stored name students so it's easy so if we were not sure what is the name we'll just use F3 and we'll look for inside student name sorted and that's the one I want to use clicking OK so that's going to allow, allow us to simply add students as we're dropping now it's going to add those students of course we're going to save these to a database in the next training of course there was a lot to cover I also want to make sure that those buttons stay at the top notice these button sets are gone I want to make sure that they stay at the top so how do we do that well I'm just going to select on both of those sets right here again I'm going to right click go into the properties and then I'm going to click don't move or size with cells I want them to remain exactly fixed just the way they are okay so now we undo the selection tools clicking on that notice those buttons stay exactly where we are okay schedule classes let's get this looking like it should putting a right border on here making it look like a traditional tab so here's another way we've done so many different ways of tabs so we have a lot of different tools and tricks in our pocket so that we can use them on any different types of screen so now we have created tabs basically using separate columns and why would why are we doing this well in this case we're doing it because we want to keep the left and the right columns exactly the same right in the same way I want those enrolled students to show up always I want that class list always to be displayed so this is a great trick to do that so we can have those displayed and then the attachments so here we have a, a, a look of a tab and we get we just have to make it a little bit better but it's almost there all the way so it's really really cool it's a great little training that we can I'm glad you were able to I think we've got some conditional formatting on here let's make sure that we don't we've cleared out all the conditional formatting we're not we're not using it okay we're good we're none on those all right we are way over time this week next week we're gonna build this screen out we're gonna make these classes fully functional I really appreciate you sticking with me on these extra long trainings if you do like this I just ask a few things all I ask is you just subscribe to the channel that would really help go ahead and comment below click like on this video and if you want to help us out go ahead and pick up the $66175 workbook zip pack that is my best applications all in a single zip file you can download it create your own customize it fully customizable however you like all right thanks so much for this extra long training we'll see you next week for part nine of the training okay thanks again